is most of the 25 hours. Hi, I'm Eric Slack, Senior Analyst with Storage Switzerland, and thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to talk about object storage and security with Rob McCammon, Director of Product Marketing, or Product Management, excuse me, from Cleversafe. Hi, Rob. Hi, Eric. Thanks for joining us. Um, as you know, uh, object storage is really an enabling technology. It's, it's generating efficiencies and scalability and reliability um, that's, that's driving some, some pretty significant use cases and applications for, for, um, for object storage systems. But can, what about security? Can, can you tell us a little bit about that? And I, I know that, that you guys have a, a technology called um, Secure Slice. Can you explain how that works and, and how that's addressing some of the security issues? Sure. Well, I mean, everyone knows how important data security mm -hmm. uh, is these days. All you have to do is look at a newspaper to see who's, uh, who's had some sort of a security breach. So mm -hmm. in our dispersed storage network, we have a feature called Secure Slice that provides excellent data security for the data that's been stored in our system. Okay. The way it works is kind of a multi-step process that combines... Uh, encryption mm -hmm. with the information dispersal based storage of our dispersed storage network. So we start off with the original data and then we encrypt that data with a form of encryption called an all or nothing transform. We take a random encryption key, we use that key and apply an encryption algorithm to the data and create uh, a package, a data package that includes both the encrypted form of the original data mm -hmm and an encrypted form of the random key that was used to encrypt that data. Okay. So then taking this encrypted form of the data and the key all packaged together, we pass that as an object to our information dispersal algorithm for storage in the DSnet. So, so the, if, if I could just jump in here then, so the, the encryption key is sent into a, a package or in, into a, an object itself? Exactly. It travels along with the data okay. and therefore doesn't have to be managed as a separate entity through a separate okay. system. Oh, that makes sense. Then taking this encrypted data package to the information dispersal, as, as you understand what we do in information dispersal is we take the original data, mm -hmm. in this case it's encrypted, we apply some mathematical algorithms to that data which expands it slightly to create some resiliency or fault tolerance in mm -hmm. the data so that when we store pieces of the original data to a number of different storage nodes, we gain a property that ensures that we can recover the originally stored data object, in this case the encrypted package, mm -hmm. from a subset of the slices of data that have been stored. So in this example, this IDA, we're taking this data, we're basically dividing it into nine pieces, uh, and we've configured our system so that we can recover this information mm -hmm. from any five of those nine pieces. So if, for example, three or four storage nodes failed, we'd be able to recover the original data. Now, the real benefit from a security point of view is because you have to have all the data mm -hmm. and the encryption key to reverse the encryption, you can see that in the form that this gets stored, there is no place on any single storage node where you have the entirety of the data that would allow you to reverse the encryption. There's no single place where the key can be found. In fact, the data stored on these different storage nodes is completely indistinguishable from random bits. So from a data at rest point of view, right. the data is now in a highly, highly secure form. Okay. I'm a little bit confused. Can you kind of contrast that with, with Traditional encryption, then? Is that Certainly. As so a, as in, a, a, in a more traditional encryption workflow, mm -hmm. you'd take your data, you'd encrypt it, you'd end up with an object kind of like this, but you'd right. have a separate encryption key, and then you would store this package on a disk drive somewhere, right. and you'd have the key somewhere. So if someone wanted to compromise the security of that architecture, they would need to go to one storage location, one storage node, and get the Get the, the encrypted data, data right. and they need to get the key. So they'd only need those two things. Oh, okay. Now in our architecture, because of dispersal, mm -hmm. they'd have to successfully uh, compromise five different storage nodes, oh, right. first of all. Right. Uh, be smart enough to know how to take those five slices and reverse the IDA to create the original package and then so you don't Use have a universal key. key. You've, you've got a, effectively a separate the key. The key really key. becomes part of the data okay. and is further obscured through the information dispersal process. 
Wow. So is there a is there like a a, a mathematical uh, uh, does that extrapolate out in, into into a, a mathematical security? number then of uh, that, that you don't get from traditional equipment? It, it certainly does. Now, I wouldn't be able to probably quantify you f that yeah. for you in real time, but the, the key point is in the same way that to get your original data back, uh -huh. right, so what would you have to do to get your original data back? You would need to read five slices in this example. You right. wouldn't need nine, but you'd need to read five slices. From those five slices, you can recreate this package. Mm -hmm. You can recover the key. So you can reverse the encryption process and get the original data back. Um, looking at the picture that way, you can see that the uh, difficulty for an attacker right. to actually collect the data necessary to revert the process right. is I have to successfully compromise five different systems, not one single system, which are likely in different physical locations. So right. many of our customers that are uh, applying the security principle, disperse their storage so this into is really multiple a non, physical locations. This kind of situation. Benefit in terms right, of the yes. difficulty, uh, the increase in the difficulty for any kind of a security breach wow. to, to happen. Wow, that's very cool. Okay. Good. Well, that's, that, that uh, if, if, if I was in charge of this or if, 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 if I was concerned about security for, for data that for my data was being stored, this would help me sleep better at night, I think. <laughs> it should, because it's a very simple approach. It's simple to apply. You don't have the complexity of separate encryption key management and right. yet more secure than the traditional approach. Oh, cool. Great. Well, thank you. That's thank a, you. That's great. Hi, this is Eric Slack, Senior Analyst of Storage Switzerland, and thanks for stopping by.